This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, a beloved figure in the Penobscot County community has died. Former Fire Chief Jim Ellis passed away unexpectedly last night. Ellis served as chief for both Holden and Eddington Fire Departments during his more than 40 years of work in the fire service and law enforcement. Our Grace Blanchard joins us now live in studio with more. Grace. Thanks, Peter. Public safety officials and residents in several communities across Penobscot County are in mourning over the passing of former fire chief and lieutenant Jim Ellis. Those who knew him say he'll be remembered as a man who dedicated his own life to making a difference in the lives of others. Beyond being a dedicated fire chief for several years, Ellis also worked as an investigator for the state fire marshal's office and for the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office, where he served as a lieutenant for 17 years. In a statement, Penobscot County Sheriff Troy Morton stated, quote, Lieutenant Ellis spent his entire adult life serving others in the public safety field. A quiet man with a big smile and infectious laugh. Jim positively impacted the lives of many. Those who serve in these roles often wonder if they have made a difference. Jim, you made a difference. He was described by members of several communities as being dedicated to his line of work. The town manager for Holden, Ben Breadmore, described him as being the patriarch for Holden and Eddington Fire. The town manager of Eddington, Shauna Hinckley, also issued a statement saying, quote, Jim dedicated over 40 years to the fire service and earned a respected reputation locally and statewide. My heart breaks for all who knew him. He served several years as the fire chief in our town and recently rejoined the Eddington Fire Department as a call firefighter because he just couldn't stay away from what he enjoyed most. He will be greatly missed. And State Fire Marshal Richard McCarthy stated, Jim Ellis dedicated his life to serving his community and protecting the people of Maine. The impact he has had on those he worked with will always be remembered and his legacy will live on for generations to come. Our thoughts are with Jim's family, friends, and colleagues during this difficult time. Grief counseling was being provided at the Eddington Fire Department, and fire crews from Orrington and Old Town stepped up to assist both Holden and Eddington. Out of respect for the Ellis family, friends, and co-workers, the Sheriff's Office is asking for privacy during this very difficult time. Funeral arrangements have not been confirmed at this time, but according to the Sheriff's Office, they will be announced in the coming days. Back to you, Peter. Well, certainly a large loss for that community, Grace. Thank you. Meanwhile, a husband and wife are seriously injured following a, a single vehicle rollover crash along Interstate 95 South this morning in Alton. The driver has been identified as 63-year-old Frederick Rhoda of Auburndale, Florida. He was traveling with his wife, 64-year-old Patricia Rhoda. According to Maine State Police, the driver was traveling southbound when he veered into the median and then overcorrected the forerunner they were traveling and then rolled over multiple times before coming to a rest in the median. Mr. Rhoda was ejected from the vehicle and Mrs. Rhoda was able to crawl out of the SUV. Neither were wearing their safety belts and both were transported to Eastern Maine Medical Center with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. The crash remains under investigation. A Millinocket man has been arrested for the alleged possession and trafficking of drugs. Shortly after 6 p.m. on Sunday, East Millinocket police conducted a traffic stop for motor vehicle defects. 36-year-old Eric Nobles was driving, and during a search of the vehicle, police found a large quantity of suspected meth, a small amount of heroin and fentanyl, and an assortment of pills. Noble was arrested for unlawful trafficking of scheduled drugs, among other charges. He was transported to the Penobscot County Jail, and the investigation is ongoing. Police say additional arrests are possible. Leaders from the Maine Community College System, Maine Maritime Academy, and Diamond Offshore Wind are all looking to the future of reusable energy. The three stakeholders announcing a partnership in an effort to make offshore wind turbines off the coast of Maine a reality. Our Doug but our Doug Banks has that story. As offshore wind really develops in the Gulf, yeah. it's done by Mainers, but it's done also in a safe, productive manner. With the slogan, Marinizing Maine's Workforce, a partnership between Diamond Offshore Wind, Maine Maritime Academy, and the Maine Community College System was announced. Workforce development for the students involved is a top priority. Maine Maritime and the community colleges have been training technicians for years. Now, 
Men and women who learn how to build, operate, understand the safety precautions, and more of offshore wind turbines can go directly into the workforce. If a prospective employer was looking at a technician to hire, they could go take a look and say, okay, have they had this piece? And so they know that if it's uh, the student is taking it at Northern Maine Community College or anywhere else, uh, they know what the standard is. According to Diamond Offshore CEO Chris Wisman, pushing reusable energy forward coincides with the state of Maine's goals for the future. It is the electrification of everything, right? As we start to plug in cars and we convert all of our heating to electricity, you need a lot more power. And offshore wind is right there at a very large scale. In Bucksport, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, Maine is under an air quality alert today due to smoke from Canadian wildfires. Our David Ledford brings us the latest. A number of our sites are recording higher levels of particle pollution today uh, as we speak. The Maine Department of Environmental Protection says that a plume of smoke from Canadian wildfires pushed into the Great Lakes region over the weekend and then eastward on Monday, raising air pollution levels in the state on Tuesday. As a result, air quality in much of the state has been deemed unhealthy for sensitive groups. Higher levels of particle pollution are extending across more of the state of Maine. As you're outside and you're looking horizontally, if, if the sky seems hazy, then that is a signal that particle pollution levels are, from the smoke are a bit higher. According to the department, you can protect yourself by avoiding strenuous activity, wearing a mask, and closing windows when indoors. DEP representatives say those with heart conditions or respiratory diseases like asthma should limit their time outdoors and monitor their condition. If you have any concerns, you should reach out to your health care provider. The department expects air quality to improve starting Wednesday. You can check your local air quality forecast by visiting the Maine DEP website. In Bangor, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. I'm glad to hear that air quality is expected to improve over the next 24 hours or so. And looking ahead, let's turn things over and take a first look at our forecast now and see what's coming our way weather-wise. All right, Peter, thank you. Happy Tuesday. Your first weather is brought to you by Webb's RV. Check out the summer specials on RVs and campers. Don't forget, we have the sharpest pencil in town, and we are talking about temperatures back in the 80s for most locations today, except for down east areas. Uh, overall, though, tomorrow, same story, and then even some cooler temperatures are on the way. Until then, though, uh, our air quality is poor once again, and watch this green stuff, right? Those are flood advisories again, as there's heavy rain out that direction right now. This this will move across the area tonight, so some locally heavy rainfall is possible, albeit brief across our region this evening into early parts of tomorrow morning. Right now, though, lots of cloud cover around. The storms are just off to the west, moving in this direction very slowly. Our forecast then tonight, though, is a couple of scattered showers and thunderstorms out there. Non-severe but heavy rain pockets in there with low temperatures in the 60s. Your full forecast is coming up. Peter? All right, and looking pretty warm overnight, too. Jeff, thank you. And coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, recovery advocates raise awareness through theater. We'll take a look at the upcoming production. And a Maine veteran who made the ultimate sacrifice more than 80 years ago was finally laid to rest. We'll have those stories and much more as ABC 7 News at 6 continues. The first ever Mazda CX-50, purpose built for the outdoors. With our most advanced driving technology for responsive, consistent performance on road and off that entices you to go further more often. Find your new Mazda today at Varney Mazda, 260 Hogan Road in Bangor, and discover what Varney Value is all about. For over 25 years, Maine Collision Center has been your main source for collision repair. Take a look at the following and you'll see why Maine Collision Center brings their team of collision repair specialists to guarantee the right person for the right repair job every time. The result? Vehicles restored to their beauty and dependability without the weights and hassles. Owner Sean Sullivan invites you to see his spacious new facility on Target Industrial Circle and see why Maine Collision Center should be your choice for collision repair. Hi, my name is Terry Smith, or Dr. T. I'm president of New England Bible College and Seminary. We're located in Bangor and South Portland. We prepare people for God's call on their lives. 
We want them to know Jesus. We believe he's more than a man because that would make him just a liar or a lunatic. We believe he is God. So if you want more information, give us a call at 947-1665 or visit us at nebc.edu. You want to learn more about God, about the Bible, this is a good opportunity for you to come and learn. God bless you. If I don't hear from you Dot, dot, dot. Am I supposed to read the dot, dot, dot? Did you know that an alpaca item is the most wish-listed gift idea? Stop searching for that perfect gift and start shopping for it at the Blue Alpaca in Belfast. It doesn't matter who's on your gift list. The Blue Alpaca has something for everyone with an incredible selection of alpaca socks, hats, sweaters, even stuffed animals and more. Shop in-store or online and take advantage of their free nationwide shipping. Too much to choose from? Don't worry. The Blue Alpaca also offers gift cards. The Blue Alpaca. Feel the difference. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back. A local playwright has fused art with activism by addressing a major ongoing crisis that's impacted millions. Our A.J. Douglas got a front row seat to learn more. I was scared not to have a drug. I was scared not to live a life of crime because I didn't know how to live life in society. The Ahab Inside Me is not the average blues opera, as the rendition of Moby Dick sheds light on the struggles and challenges that stem from addiction. It's an inspirational tale of a fishing community and their daunting quest for survival in the face of the opiate epidemic. Actor Teddy Lyle says his character, Robbie Jr., comes from a family of addiction. Lyle explains that his own life experiences have inspired his art as he has been on a path to recovery since 2015. There are moments where it is a reflection of the feelings I've felt. It tells this story that is relatable, especially in a location like this where you see a lot of struggle and a lot of a heroin overdose. Michael Gorman co-directs for the 40 Hour Club, a theater group which partners with local and state organizations like Maine Prison Reentry Network, Link Center, and Hope Broker Incorporated. Gorman says one of the missions behind the play is to break negative stigmas associated to those in recovery. So I hope it can propel greater understanding in the community and, and, and constructive social change. Marshall Mercer is an outreach leader for Hope Brokers Incorporated and has taken on a role in the production. He says scene after scene, he is connecting to a community that supports him while in recovery. I'm challenging myself to get out of the comfort zone. And that's the same thing with addiction. The Ahab Inside Me premieres Thursday at the Colonial Theater in Augusta at 7 p.m. For more details, visit 40hourclub.com. In Augusta, I'm A.J. Douglas for ABC7 and Fox 20. News. In other news, a veteran was finally laid to rest this afternoon, even though he paid the ultimate sacrifice more than 80 years ago. Devin Dagnalt has his story. On the afternoon of July 18th, Ensign Stanley Allen was brought back to his home state and laid to rest in the Central Maine Veterans Memorial Cemetery. Allen was one of the many sailors killed during the attack on Pearl Harbor. He was 24 years old, and his remains were lost for 82 years. No one here today uh, knew him personally, but we knew very important things about him. He was part of the greatest generation. He volunteered for the Navy, and he served honorably, and he paid the ultimate sacrifice. For decades, Allen's identity was a mystery, lost among the 388 unidentified sailors and Marines aboard the USS Oklahoma, who were originally interred as unknowns. In 2015, the Defense POWMIA Accounting Agency began an effort to identify those soldiers through DNA testing. And by the 80th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor, the testing was complete. This is a demonstration that... The United States Navy and the Department of Defense will do whatever it takes and for however long it takes to properly account for each and every sailor and each and every service member. 
After the confirmation of his identity, the U.S. Navy notified Allen's next of kin and organized a proper burial. My mother actually didn't thought it was a hoax. And she, um, when uh, Chief Robinette sh showed up at our house to make a personal appearance, she wouldn't speak to him until he came back in his uniform. Although Allen's living family have no direct memories of him, his first cousin once removed, Allen Galwick, says his story will not be forgotten. I do feel like I'm part of a larger family, uh, and, um, and I do think it sets a high bar for everybody in my family. Um, this was an incredible young man. In Augusta, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And a remarkable story there. Well, still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, the weather this July has been a boon for gardeners in the state. Our Matthew Jaroncic tells us why. And in sports, the Senior League Baseball East Regional starts tomorrow in Bangor. What Mansfield Stadium officials are most looking forward to. We'll have that right after the break. We get up and go no matter what day it is. We make sure nothing keeps us from doing what needs to be done because we're driven by what we love. Milwaukee's outdoor power equipment handles any job, big or small, from trimmers, blowers, and mowers to pole and chainsaws. Milwaukee's battery-operated high-output tools will help get you to the moments that matter most. Get what you need to keep you firing on all cylinders when you sign up for Napa Rewards. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a main family that cares. With AAA insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. When we switched to AAA auto insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, GEICO, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more. And do more. The savings from AAA insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. Mossy Ledge Spirits is a true hidden gem in Aetna. Located just three miles off 95, exit 167, we are home to tastings, tours, cocktails, bottles, live music, minis, and priceless memories. And this summer, we are proud to introduce our all-new canned spirits. At Mossy Ledge Spirits, we take pride in what we put in the can, and our delicious new flavors are a perfect way to enjoy the summer. So enjoy some pizza and raise the glass here at Mossy Ledge Spirits. The ultimate family-friendly concert experience is back and all new for 2023. The Kids Bop Never Stop Live Tour is coming your way, so get ready to sing and dance. Saturday, July 22nd, Maine Savings Amphitheater, Bangor, Maine. On sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. So come have the best time ever at the Kids Bop Never Stop Live Tour. See you there. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Ansley Moore, a realtor since 2013, working throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Senior League Baseball is returning to Bangor. Starting on Wednesday, the Senior League East Region Tournament will be held at Mansfield Stadium with teams competing for the chance to head to the Senior League World Series. Teams from Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Rhode Island, Delaware, Connecticut, New York, and Pennsylvania all over the region will be playing for the chance to represent the East in South Carolina for the World Series. Maine Little League District 3 Administrator Mike Brooker says that, as always, the tournament is a great opportunity for both the players and Bangor to show off a little of what they're made of. We're comfortable hosting it. We're glad to do it. We're showcasing the stadium in Bangor. They're showcasing themselves. Kids play Little League and Senior League for the love of the game. And they're here because they want to compete at the highest possible level and they want to succeed. 
Speaking of the highest level, Mansfield has hosted a bunch of senior leaguers that have gone to the major leagues back when they had the Senior League World Series every year. Xander Bogarts, Kenley Jansen, those guys ring any bells. And while they all came from the World Series, which was held for a 15-year stretch at the stadium, that doesn't mean there isn't a future star among us this week. We're always excited for all the kids that come here. The talent level is amazing, be it the World Series or the regional. It's pretty exciting to see that, and we can a lot of times tell right from the get-go if a guy's got it. All right, certainly is easy to tell if a guy really has it. Meanwhile, let's go to golf now. It was cut down day at the Maine Women's Amateur Championship with the final round set for Wednesday. To Brunswick Golf Club we go. We are going to start on hole 10. This is Mary Latini out of Riverside off the green, and she will drop it into the cup. What an amazing shot to save par. Here we go now with Julie Treadwell. She's golfing out of JW Parks Golf Course with a tremendous approach shot here. She's going to put it just a few inches from the cup. That'll set up a nice easy putt for her to clean up. Let's stay on 10 now. Faith Jenkins knocking down a birdie putt here. And then moving to defending champ Ruby Haylock with a tough putt for par. She would knock that one in to save her par there. And then her sister Jade in the hunt as well. She's going to be coming out of the sand here with a great chip right to the green on hole 10. But your leader through two rounds is Erin Holmes. She was the leader coming into the day. A beautiful punch and run here on 11. That would be a tap in for par when it's all said and done. Here she is on heading into the final day on top. There's a few tricky greens here, so I really think it's about playing safe, be playing to the middle of the green and consistently doing so, and then you just have to be patient with birdies. Um, I think if you get too risky, um, you'll get punished. So hopefully I can just stay even the rest of the week, and um, yeah, hopefully I can pull it off. All right, wishing her luck on Wednesday and all the other golfers in the hunt. That is all the time we have for sports, though. Here's Jeff Weller with your full five-day forecast. Jeff? All right, Tyler, thank you. Your full weather is brought to you by the Blue Alpaca Ranch and Store. Visit our ranch to meet the alpacas or shop in our store in downtown Belfast. And we are talking about daylight today. We're going to lose a minute and 45 seconds just today. We've lost about 30 minutes of daylight since June 21st. And as you know, our days are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Daylight hours are around here. Uh, but temperatures don't care. 81 here in Bangor today, 82 Millinocket, 74 for Bar Harbor. Very comfortable outside today. And now there's a couple showers and storms just to the west. The big story, though, nationwide is the heat. Record-breaking heat in Oklahoma, into Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, and Nevada. Uh, there's a big heat dome here, and these numbers will likely increase throughout this week with widespread 100-plus degree temperatures there, causing all sorts of issues. All because, or in due partly to this, this is a look at the sea surface temperatures as of yesterday, and this, there's California right there. This is a really, 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 really strong El Nino, and that tends to disrupt all sorts of weather patterns across the world. And of course, that's happening for us right now as we have a very wet spring and summer going on, and that trend likely to continue. All right, the air quality is not good out there again today. Lots of smoke in the atmosphere. It's up there pretty high, but still measuring moderate air quality here in Bangor currently. This will likely go downhill tonight before improving a bit across the area tomorrow. All right, so lots of clouds out there today, and now a couple of showers and a few thunderstorms in there as well. Uh, these will likely be non-severe tonight, but uh, they'll likely contain some heavy rain that will linger through sunset into probably around midnight or so before they're getting out of here, and then more rain, some more rain back in the forecast for tomorrow. If you get under one of these tonight, you're likely going to know it with that locally heavy rainfall across our region. It'll be brief, though. They are moving pretty quickly uh, to north of about 35 miles per hour. All right, so here is tonight looking at showers and a couple of storms around uh, the out of here by tomorrow morning. And then here's the story. For tomorrow, we should clear out for a little while tomorrow with temperatures back up near 80. But see that? There's going to be another round of afternoon showers and storms tomorrow. Any of those could be locally heavy once again with some heavy rainfall in there. Then we dry out again tomorrow night before we get some more weather in here on Thursday into Friday. So overall, our wet pattern does continue with scattered showers and a couple of thunderstorms out there. More widespread rain gets in here over the weekend. I know, I know. Our forecast tonight, though, is scattered showers and a couple 
couple of storms out there, locally dense fog, low temperatures down near 65, likely non-severe, but with pockets of heavy rain. For tomorrow, here we go again. So scattered showers and a couple of thunderstorms in there, likely late in the afternoon. High temperatures, humid, back up near 83 once again. And that southwest breeze around 5. And then looking ahead, your five-day forecast shows the story, right? So 83 tomorrow. I have us dry on Thursday. That's going to be close. 85, 80 on Friday. More rain back in the forecast, potentially heavy rain over the weekend. Peter? Alrighty, Jeff, thanks so much. And there's still more to come after the break. Stay with us. During renewal by Anderson's 4th of July sale, get incredible savings on the most trusted family of window and patio door brands in America. Call for your free window diagnosis and begin your renewal by Anderson Signature Service experience. A unique start-to-finish home improvement solution, skillfully guided by Renewal by Anderson professionals. Our 4th of July sale is going on right now, but it won't last. Act now, because these incredible 4th of July savings on our exclusive composite fabrics material windows end soon. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. Saliba's Rug Cleaners in Bangor is the best and only spot you should go to for your rug cleanings. Serving Maine for more than 70 years, we care about your rugs. Clean rugs last longer, and our family takes pride in being the professionals that you can trust. Our cleaning process consists of soaking your rug in a bath, shampooing, rinsing, and drying in a humidity-controlled dry room, making sure no detail is overlooked. Need a repair? We fully service every type of rug for you. Saliba's Rug Cleaners. We care about your rugs. Hi folks, this is Barry Gass of Gas Horse Supply and Western Wear in Orono. We've been in business since 1911, and our third generation family owned business can't wait to show you our unique line of Western Wear and Western Tack. We have Western boots, shirts, hats, belts, and buckles for the entire family. And Western Tack from bridles to saddles and everything in between for your horse. Gas Horse Supply and Western Wear, where the American West comes alive in Maine. It's the Toyota Summer Savings Event featuring SUVs from the longest lasting brand, Toyota. You've been waiting for a new Toyota, so now's the time, come and get it. Right now, you could save up to $1,600 with affordable 3.99% financing on all-wheel drive RAV4. And every RAV4 comes with two years no-cost maintenance and more. The Toyota Summer Savings Event at your New England Toyota dealer, your all-wheel drive headquarters. So come and get it. Toyota, let's go places. Hover's Place provides quality treatment with compassion and convenience. We offer a broad array of products geared to address illnesses and injuries. We stock a great selection of pipes, t-shirts, herbs, incense, CBD, and more. Visit us just one and a half miles off Route 7, past Spring Street Greenhouse in Dexter. Tonight, the record-breaking heat. How hot could it get? Plus, the Gilgo Beach serial killer investigation. What we're now learning. More Americans turn to the most watched program on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Welcome back. Bangor and Brewer residents will have the chance to cultivate their green thumbs this weekend. Starting at 9 a.m. on Saturday, both Bangor and Brewer will be hosting urban garden tours free of charge at various locations throughout the cities. Residents will have the opportunity to tour 12 gardens where longtime gardeners will be available to answer questions and offer support for aspiring vegetable and plant growers. In addition to the tour, there will also be a how to build a garden bed demonstration at the food and medicine greenhouse in Brewer that starts at 3 p.m. In case of rain, the tour will take place on Sunday, July 23rd with the same schedule and for the full lineup of gardens, you can visit foodandmedicine.org. And staying on that note, this month we've seen some picture-perfect days, some very stormy days, and even some oppressively humid days. Our Matthew Jaronsik highlights how local agriculture is thriving thanks to Mother Nature's unpredictability. When it comes to Mother Nature, she's been full of surprises. The warmest days of the year are coming over the July 4th holiday to the recent rain and flash flood warnings. So, one would think gardens wouldn't be able to withstand these unusual weather patterns. But according to some real green thumbs, think again. I've already um, been able to pick some romaine lettuce and um, I'm getting some buds on my squash and my tomatoes and some cukes. 
walking around the Bangor Community Garden, you can see some local garden beds in need of some TLC. Yet tomatoes on the vine are changing colors, berries ripe enough to be picked, even flowers popping with their rainbow of colors. It's a learning process. I don't find it as difficulty or anything. I think it's challenging and it's a process of learning. That's, that's the way I look at it. And whether you're a veteran or a beginner, Maine's ever-changing weather will test your planting skills. Some may just be starting to garden. Some may also be, you know, professional gardeners. But everyone just joins in and is so willing to learn and teach and share their knowledge to the, the next gardener coming up. So if your garden is not looking so hot right now or starting to see some blooms, just remember, every seed has its own story. Keep at it. Uh, pay attention to what you're doing and and take care of the environment that the, the plants want to be in. In Bangor, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And some great advice from, from some experienced gardeners. All right, well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We'll be right back here at 11.